YouTube, what's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over this RGB kind of distort blur effect. It's kind of like a trippy effect. It's cool, you can use it as a transition. You can use it just as like some texture shots uh, to kind of split up the performance and just like add a little bit of variety to your shots. And you can also just have it like flash on and off. So uh, I'll be showing you guys that. I had a tutorial very similar to this. So if you like this one, you can go ahead and check out the other one. Uh, I did it on a DDG music video. It's using Sapphire Warp Chroma instead of Distort Chroma, which is what we're using today. So it's a little bit different but uh, generally the same concept. I haven't really seen this effect done really anywhere, mostly because when you drag this effect on to your clip, it first off, it like starts off looking really weird. And uh, in my opinion, it doesn't look good at all. So uh, I think a lot of people get like scared away by using that effect just because of how it looks like when you drag that effect on. So I'm gonna be showing you how to make it look good. You can make some of your own effects with it. I'm also gonna be going through like three or four different ideas I have on how to use it. If you're new here, what I do is a lot of tutorials on music video effects. So if you like this video, definitely be sure to subscribe because I have plenty of other ones just like this and if you haven't already go ahead and like and comment on the video it really does help push the content to other people that are looking for this style of content and it really does help me out a lot so uh, i'd appreciate it if you did that one last thing before we get into the video if you want to support the channel even more the best way to do that is going over to brindelbada.com and checking out my texture pack it's a really high quality pack that i spent like over 48 hours working on uh just ripping up paper and scanning it over so you can get that lone wolf like aug look effects pretty easily i'll have that link below as well with a playlist with all the effects that i already have done tutorials on i think i've already done like 11 or so and i'm just going to keep on adding into it like every week so there's definitely not a shortage of effects that you can do with the pack but yeah that's enough talking let's get into the video and break down some of these effects so the set of effects i'm going to be going over is this one right here it's kind of like a it like warps and twirls a little bit it's a little bit more of aggressive effect so it's like more as a transition and then this one's just like a constant blue warp and then this is a constant red i'll show you how to do both of those i think those are pretty cool for like texture shots here's like a little bit uh less aggressive of a transition and it's only done one way. And then this is kind of just like an example of how you can have it flash on and off. Also, if you guys want a tutorial on this like bouncing here, uh, it bounces to the beat of the song. That, uh, that effect took me a while to learn. If you want a tutorial on that, definitely leave a comment below and a like because that's gonna take a while to break down because I'm gonna have to figure out a way to explain it efficiently and not have the video be like an hour long. Also, shout out to Zayzay Cook It Up because that's uh, I'm editing a music video for him right now and I'm just using his clips for the music video. So yeah, we'll go over that. And then lastly, just another example of how you can just add it as a texture shot, you know, just having a little bit of effect. It's nothing too crazy. I think this effect's really good for like more modern uh, music videos only because like I know RGB split and like glitch effects were real popular for a while, but now it kind of looks a little corny when you do it in music videos. So I think this is kind of like the equivalent of that uh, without it looking corny in my opinion, at least. I think it looks pretty uh, pretty clean. It's just like a cool effect to do in a music video that adds just a little bit of texture. All right, so the first effect we're gonna be going over here is this transition. So what I have it do is I have the effect really aggressive here and then it twirls a little bit and then it goes down, like the amount of it goes down a lot. And then it gets a, it gets more of the blur and also twirls a little bit more. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is just duplicate the clip and remove the distort chroma. And then, like I said, you need Sapphire plugins to do this effect. So Sapphire distort chroma here, dragging it on. And this is why I think not a lot of people use the effect because when you drag it on, this looks like really bad in my opinion. I think it just looks like, I don't know what you would use this for. Maybe if you like drug it on to a uh, later where you wrote a brush, it wouldn't look that bad. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drag the blur length up. I found anywhere from like 300 to like 800, depending on your clip, looks good. I think 300 is pretty safe. Most of the time you already got a, a lot better looking of an effect in my opinion. It just kind of smooths out the uh, clip and just adds a lot more. It like makes it look more realistic, I guess, is the way, what I'm trying to say. And then normally I just choose to either warp red or blue, not both at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn warp red to zero. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the amount down to something like 0.3, just for right now. So you can see that if you drag it down a little bit, what it does is makes it go close to the normal look. So I think something like either 0.1 or negative one is good for 
just having it be textured but when you want the transition we can do something like 0.75 whatever you think looks good obviously the more aggressive you look the more it needs to be like in a transition and not just be on a normal shot because like this would look really bad if you just let this play throughout a full clip but yeah we can go ahead and keyframe the amount and also rotational warp distortion what that does is it basically just warps the colors around so basically what it's doing is it's just warping and inverting so if you were to go to amount and put negative 0.75 what that does is instead of blurs the blues it makes it like blur the reds and oranges just keep that in mind you can do either or the way i'm going to change it throughout the clip though is using the rotation just to give it a little bit extra of a twirl so you can just leave it on something like 0.75 for now and then a few last things is i like to go to amount uh, reflect x and do 0.3 and 0.3 for the y as well and it kind of just brings the the colors closer together and then before we go on and do the actual effect, I'm just going to show you a few things that you can do. This is just generally for the effect itself, the distort chroma effect. So steps, what that's going to do is it's just going to add more steps in between here. So you want something smoother, you can drag it up. I just drag it up to 100 there. Default 8, I think something between like 8 and 15 looks kind of cool. I think having the little bit of steps, in my opinion, looks cool. So I'm going to do something like 10 for this. And then if you want to ever change the colors, what you can do is you can go ahead and change the colors, but keep in mind it's going to turn... The color color of the clip like this so to fix that you can click white balance and it will change some of the colors and you can see here so you can play it around with that but i like to keep it default i like the way that looks for this effect so now onto the effect make sure to keyframe the amount and rotate warp and then what i'm going to do is just go 15 frames ahead so one two three if you hold shift and forward frame it goes five at a time so that's why i counted three and then we can go ahead and drag the amount down to something like three bring the amount down to something like 0.3 that way it makes it look a lot more blended in with the clip and then i'm just going to go ahead and rotate the warp something like 90 so that way it rotates really fast in here and then it will stop and then I'm going to go to the last frame in the effect and then holding shift again and back three frames, one, two, three. So it goes back 15. I'm going to go ahead and keyframe the rotate and amount. I'm going to keep the amount the same at 0.3 and then I'm going to rotate this another 90 degrees. So it's going to go to something like 180. Obviously the values you have can be different. Uh, I'm just doing what I think looks cool. So what it's going to do is here to here, it's aggressive and rotates pretty fast. And then here it's a lot less noticeable of an effect, but it's still rotating. And then we can go ahead and go to the last frame in the clip, bring it up to something like 0.75 again. And then I'm just gonna rotate it another 90 degrees. So if we do that, it would be 270 degrees. And then we can go ahead and render that out and see what our effect looks like. And I think that's a really clean like transition clip. Obviously, you don't have to do it on both sides. Like you could do it just coming in one way and then going down to zero or just staying at a low mount. But if you have like a quick like B-roll shot like this, I think that's just like a cool way to transition between two clips. Onto the next, I'll group these two together because they're pretty much the same. Basically, what this is is just the effect being stagnant throughout. So it just has the blur throughout the whole thing and it doesn't change at all. I think that's a cool way of just adding a little bit of different look to your shots. So if you have a, like same performance in the same location or something, you can go ahead and shift between these two just to kind of have a cool look. I think for these, I did, uh, I had the sh steps kind of noticeable, but I think actually if you just wanted to let it uh, play throughout the whole clip. What I'll do when I show you guys is we'll have it. And then again, just dragging on distort chroma here and changing our amounts. So blur 300, warp red zero, warp blue 0.3, amount rotate or rel X and Y both 0.3. And then we have already a cool effect. I think I'm just gonna drag up the steps like I mentioned, that way it looks a little smoother. And just like that, you have a clip that has a little bit of texture to it. If you don't want it to be that aggressive, you can change the amount or the warp blue down a little bit. So you can do something like 0.5 in the amount. And then there it's a lot less noticeable, but it's still there. And then if you wanted red warp instead of blue warp here, you could just change the values of warp blue and warp red. So make this zero and make this 0.3. And we can go ahead and render these out. There's the red and there's the blue. I think they both look pretty cool. I'm a fan of the red more. And like I said, you can change the intensity of it by dragging the amount. And you can even do transitions like this. Like you could have it start here at like 2.2 and go down to 0.3. So we could do that real quick just to show you another example of an effect so 2.2 keyframe obviously a lot one two three four doesn't really matter how long you have it and then go down to something like point five and there you go there's another cool effect that you can do with it obviously everyone's clip's going to be different so the amount and warp and blur lens is always going to be a little different for each clip even so just play around with that like i said 
I think 300 is a pretty safe number to start off with. And then anywhere from like 0.3 to like 1.5 on the warp red and blue. And then the amounts, you can really do whatever you want. I normally stay around one. And then here I'm gonna show you a way that you can easily have a transition across a bunch of clips. So I, what I went ahead and did is right clicked here and created a new item and just created an adjustment layer. This way you can drag this across multiple clips too. So if you wanted it to blend between two clips, you wouldn't have to match the keyframes. You would just be able to drag the adjustment layer over. Again, dragging Sapphire Distort Chroma on top and changing our values. This time I'm gonna have Warp Blue at 1.5. This is gonna be more of a smooth transition, but I want the colors to be distorted a lot. We're gonna put the amount to zero at first, keyframe that, and also keyframe the rotate warp distortion or direction. So if you hold shift, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I just went ahead and made this 40 frames long, the transition or the adjustment layer. That way it will, the effect will take 40 frames. So what I did is just the adjustment layer, uh, 40 frames long. So if you hold shift, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we can go to the last frame. To see the effect, I always go one last frame and then drag the keyframe over. So it's gonna be on the 39th frame right now and then we just drag it over on the last frame. And then the amount, we can make it something like negative 0.35, and I forgot to change the uh, the amount reflection, so 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and that's gonna make the effect look a lot better. There it is. And I think I'm just gonna bring up the steps just a little bit to kind of blur it. 14 looks good for me. And then, since this is a more smooth transition, I don't want it to be as aggressive as the other ones that we did. So I'm just gonna have the rotate warp. I'm just gonna drag it till I see something that looks good, but also just not too crazy of a warp. I just want a little bit of movement, maybe 29 looks good. And then, like I said, highlight both these clips or these keyframes and drag it to the 40th frame instead of 39. And then we can go ahead and render these in. And that's a pretty smooth transition. And like I said, since it's on an adjustment layer, you can just hold alt and drag it anywhere. So if you wanted the transition to be here, it would be applied to your clip. I think that's a pretty cool way of doing that. And if you wanted it between two clips, you could kind of just drag it right here and it will distort throughout the whole thing. Obviously it looks a little weird because we have the two effects here. And you could even double the length of it. So instead of 40, make it 80 frames and have the middle be the most aggressive. And then ha and then basically just reset the keyframes to what they were on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, if that makes sense. I wouldn't just reset the rotate warp to zero though. I would just double the number that it is in the middle. So like continues at the same pace, if that makes sense. So just another idea. And then I th pretty much did the exact same thing that I did on the, the adjustment layer here. On this clip, I just have the amount keyframed at point or negative 0.7 and the rotate keyframed at negative 58. And then I just have the rotate kind of going crazy and the amount doesn't start changing for a little bit. So you can see the rotate a little bit and then I have it stop. And then like I said, and then if you want the clip to kind of cut in and out like this, how it has that uh, distort just on the hit of the drums, just for a second, you, what you can do is just go ahead and duplicate your video clip, copy and paste from the one that just has the texture where there's no keyframes at all. And then you can tweak it to whatever. So this is a constant one, no keyframes. It's gonna look the same all the way through. And then you can just cut parts that you want it to come in on. So for example, here I wanted it to come in and then just go away on the hits of the drum. So I just cut the clip with the effect on and that's just, and then I just put it over the other one. I think that's a pretty simple way to kind of just edit to the beat of the music and kind of just add a little bit extra texture. Again, if you guys want a tutorial on this, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, the bush just kind of grows and gets a little bit warped and stuff. Uh, I definitely can do a tutorial on it. Like I said, it would take a while to explain and figure out a way to explain it where it would actually make sense because like there's a lot of steps going on in there and I can do it and I can obviously do the effect myself, but explaining it to someone and making sure that every step is being able to be followed correctly is a little bit more challenging. So if this is something you guys want, definitely let me know because um, the effect or the tutorial will be pretty long. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the effects. If you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate you. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do so. And if you haven't liked and commented, go ahead and let me know what you thought of the video in the comments and hit the like button. Like I said earlier, if you want to support the channel even more, uh, go ahead and check out briandelmata.com and check out my texture pack. I'll have a link to the website in the description where you can purchase the pack and also a playlist of effects that I've had tutorials on. Obviously not all the effects you can do with the pack, but it is uh, just a few examples of some that you can do. Be sure to follow me on Instagram because I have a lot of polls debating on what effect we're going to do next and just a bunch of other things that I can interact with you guys. If you guys have any questions or whatever, uh, you can hit me in the DMs. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. 